Hi, I'm Jim Gordon, and you're watching Small Cap Power Discussions. Joining us is Dr. Mark Hayden from Clear Mind Medicine. Dr. Hayden is a trailblazer in the field of psychedelic medicine. Professor Hayden, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Jim. Great to have you, sir. Oh, this is uh, interesting stuff I want to talk about. Uh, you have an incredible amount of work history uh, in the field of which we're going to discuss in this arena. Can you give us a little background on the 30 years or so that you have spent studying and explaining what we're about to explain to our viewers? I spent most of my career working in the addiction services as a supervisor for Vancouver Coastal Health. And we went, dealt with a variety of different addictions. And somewhere along the way, I kind of started doing this public health thing where I started publishing on post-prohibition models for the regulation and control of all currently illegal drugs. That translated into an organization called MAPS Canada, okay. which is the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies. I ran that for 10 years and now I've joined ClearMind. Um, you have been a pioneer, as you mentioned, in psychedelic fields. What do you find so exciting about psychedelics and their medical potential? Well, do you know, in my 30 years of working for the Vancouver Coastal Health Addiction Services, nobody ever walked into my clinic, had a transformative experience, and walked out. I had the best staff. I had kind, compassionate, caring, beautiful therapists who were dedicated to the job and they did not do as good a work as they could have done had they been using psychedelics. The efficiency and the effectiveness of psychedelic healing is unparalleled in terms of their healing potential. Uh, can you talk a bit about the existing treatments for alcoholism? I, I'm, I'm astounded when I look at these numbers that you guys provided with the 95,000 uh, um, Americans die every year due to alcohol misuse. You've got 5.3% of adults struggling with alcohol use disorder. Uh, talk a bit about the uh, existing treatments for alcoholism. Well, the list of options are AA. If you want to be hardcore abstinent, there are groups around the world that will support you to do that. Mm -hmm. There's therapy and counseling where people look at their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And that works for some people but it doesn't work for everybody. Sure. AA doesn't work for everybody because it's hardcore abstinence. There are some medications, there's things like antabuse, where you drink alcohol and you take antabuse, you become violently ill. Yeah. There's naltrexone, which takes away the pleasure of alcohol. And there's a, a few other ones as well. But there's nothing like what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna be talking about a new medication that I think would be incredibly helpful for the treatment of alcoholism. I'm uh, curious to hear you talk about MEAI, uh, difference in it as a potential treatment for alcoholism. Uh, can you tell me a what it means and how it treats mm -hmm. this disease? MEI is short for 5-methoxy-2-aminoindane. It's a new psychoactive substance and I believe its ability to treat alcoholism is going to be profound. Let me describe what happens when you take MEI. Imagine that you've just finished eating two pieces of chocolate-covered, goopy cheesecake. And somebody puts a third piece of cheesecake in front of you and hands you a fork. Not in your wildest fantasy could you imagine yeah. touching the cheesecake. So why can't you touch the cheesecake? You're not sick. Right. You're not so sedated you can't walk. You're not hanging off, you're not so stimulated you're hanging off the ceilings. You're just satiated. Mm -hmm. You're just finished with cheesecake. MEI gives you a liquid satiation experience. If you drink it enough, you will feel like you are completely done with what you're doing. If you add it to alcohol, yeah. you will stop drinking alcohol no matter what your intention was when you started. For that period of time? For that period, period of, time. of time, yes. Um, now, is this, treatment, is this treatment or harm reduction for alcohol? Well, it's interesting that you ask that question because there really hasn't been such a thing for harm reduction for alcohol. Harm mm. reduction essentially says, how do you give it to somebody who is using and allow them to continue to use and reduce the harm? Right. So the whole discussion of harm reduction for alcohol has been with non-potable alcohol drinkers. If you're drinking Lysol or hand sanitizer and you have huge health problems, if you give people real potable alcohol, mm. that's seen as harm reduction. So there's nothing like this. This allows people to continue to drink alcohol, but quite frankly, you just simply stop. And what indications could MEAI be helpful for alcoholism, uh, binge eating, mm -hmm. smoking? Well, 
we don't know yet. The, the most intuitively obvious one is alcohol. But certainly there are anecdotal reports of people using it for other addictive behaviors as well. Mm -hmm. Smoking, perhaps, maybe you're just simply done with cigarettes. I could see it being connected with binge eating if you're sitting there with a bucket of ice cream just going mm -hmm. wild and you become completely satiated if you connect it to the ice cream, you won't want any more ice cream. You know, is it useful for addictive sexual behaviors? Maybe. Gambling? I'm not quite sure whether it would work. We, we don't know yet. The sort of ones that are kind of intuitively obvious to me, and then there's ones that we just simply don't know about. And how does the Clear Minds MEAI differ from uh, more conventional psychedelics? Well, traditional psychedelic treatments are designed to, quite frankly, cure. You know, if you think about MDMA for PTSD or psilocybin for a variety of addictive disorders. Mm -hmm. They're intense therapeutic experiences that work dramatically. Um, they, they can work dramatically. They don't always work dramatically, but the, certainly they can be incredibly helpful. They are also very costly. Mm -hmm. The way we, ClearMind is envisioning MEAI is it wouldn't be costly because essentially you don't need any therapist. In fact, you don't need any, any, anything. You just need a very small bottle of MEAI and you either take it with the alcohol that you're drinking or you take it as opposed to your alcohol that you're drinking. You take it um, as an alternative to drinking alcohol because it feels a bit like alcohol and then you stop. So one of the interesting things about MEAI is it's attractive, but it's not too attractive. Right. If you think about the other treatments for alcoholism, they are unattractive. They take away the pleasure. MEAI adds to the pleasure, and then you hit the wall. So you want the ideal treatment for alcoholism, people would want to take because it's positive. Right. MEAI is a positive experience. But you don't want it to be too positive. If it becomes ecstatic or incredibly exciting, um, that's called addiction, right. and then we have a problem on our hands. So MEI is, has that very narrow window of attractiveness. Right. You want it to be a little bit attractive, but not hugely attractive. Attractive enough to take with your alcohol, and it's attractive enough to drink it, so you stop drinking alcohol. Uh, why did you decide to join Clear My Medicine? Uh, you're listening to your passion here. I'm getting a sense why, but you tell me. Well, ClearMind Medicine is a company that's been formed around one inventor's group of molecules. And I know him, and I find his molecules really interesting, and they're, it's a no, they're novel psychoactive substances. And so there's these family of medicines that this company is going to bring to market. And I find that pretty exciting. And how would you describe ClearMind's approach to psychedelic space? ClearMind is very, very focused and has a very, very limited approach. If I think about many of the other companies that are interested in the psychedelic space, they're trying to do everything. They're opening clinics and they're, they want to make and they want to manufacture and they want to grow mushrooms and they, they want to do all of these things. ClearMind is laser focused. Mm -hmm. These molecules turn them into this medicine for this purpose and do it through the process of IP. So they protect their IP because these are novel psychoactive substances. They protect their IP and it's incredibly clear what they're going to do. So I, I appreciate the clarity and the huge potential for its win because having worked in the addiction services field, I can absolutely guarantee you normal addiction services treatments are not as effective as they could be. Uh, we're talking with Mark Hayden from Clear Mind Medicine. It's clearmindmedicine.com if you want more details as we continue our discussion. Uh, Mark, what is, your, what is Clear Mind's R&D plan for next year? Uh, USA, expand to Europe, Canada. Tell us a little more about that if you could. Please. The first plan is to work with the FDA in the United States. And so it's essentially if you think about how molecules get turned into medicines, the analogy is we're all sitting around a campfire with a luminous moon hanging above our heads and we're telling stories to each other. That's called anecdotal. As we start to notice that our stories overlap and your story is related to my story, that's called anecdotal that's of interest to science. And so then we obviously ask ourselves the question, but is it safe? That's called preclinical toxicology. And then we say, well, if it works for us, would it work for other people? That's called a stage one, two, and three clinical trial. Right now, 
Clear Mind Medicine with MEI is both doing the pre-clinical pre toxicology and the sitting around the campfire telling stories and trying to figure out what this could be useful for. Plan B is to work with Canada and then Europe. So they would like to have all of those um, countries on board. And it makes complete sense given those are absolutely huge markets. Mark, can you expand on ClearMind's road to profitability? ClearMind wants to be the provider of some of the best addiction treatment tools that are available, given that addiction treatments don't work very well today. So they want to legalize MEI, which is 5-methoxy-2-aminoindane, and the first indication that they want to treat is alcoholism. There are lots of other indications it may be useful for, and so the role is through the process of stage one, two, and three clinical trials, the subsequent market for these medicines could be absolutely huge. Alcoholism is the first step and it's massive. And if MEI proves to be beneficial for other indications, not just alcoholism, it'll be absolutely fascinating. This may wind up being the treatment for a variety of addictions. Mark, this all sounds fantastic, but there's this nagging feeling I have that I know there's going to be people out there saying, no, what do you see as the pushback or blowback or the challenges for what you guys want to do to succeed? Anytime you want to make a change, there's always pushback. Right. So in anticipating that, I think the pushback will come from two places. One is it's not attractive enough. People don't want to take it or it's too attractive. So MEI, I believe, has that kind of sweet spot in the window of being somewhat attractive, but not really exciting. But some people will say it's not attractive enough, people won't take it. Yeah. And other people would say it's too attractive and people really like it, that equals addiction. So I believe that those two challenges will prove to not be true, but I think we need to anticipate them as is it too or not too attractive? Is it that small window of attractiveness that actually works? Uh, one last question for you here, Mark. What is your position on the difference between for-profit and not-for-profit companies? Yeah. Well, I've spent my life in both. And I see not-for-profit companies, off often there is a perception that there is some antagonism between for-profit and not-for-profit companies. Personally, I don't buy it. My view of the world is we need both. If you think about the large goal, my personal large goal is I would like to see psychedelics widely available, inexpensively available, without a lot of legal restrictions. In order to achieve that, we need both nonprofits because they're really good at public education and community building right. and talking about this stuff and engaging people around that particular discussion. And having run a nonprofit for 10 years, it's really hard to attract the capital that you need to do a stage one, two, and three clinical trial. That's why we need for-profit companies. So what we need is both. We need for-profit companies doing what they do best and we need not-for-profit companies doing what they do best. With those two working together, we will achieve the goal of having legal psychedelics. This is exciting stuff. We uh, appreciate you joining us today. Lots to uh, digest. It's Mark Hayden, who is a trailblazer in the field of psychedelic medicine. Look for uh, clearmindmedicine.com for more information. Mark Hayden is here today with Clear Mind Medicine. Mark, thank you for joining us uh, on Small Cap Power Discussions on location. Thank you. You're quite welcome, sir. And I'm Jim Gordon. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you watching.